Hi, thanks for checking out this video. My name's Kyle and I'm a visual effects compositor. Today, we're gonna talk about those badass VFX breakdowns that you see all the time. All the layers are getting revealed. Every little thing that the VFX artist did is, is drawing attention to the eye. You've all seen them, you know what I'm talking about. This video is gonna show you some really simple workflows to start building your own VFX breakdowns inside of After Effects. I'm gonna show you the exact techniques I used when I made this breakdown for my desert train shot. Let's get right into it. Okay, the most important thing you have to do is pre-plan your shot. So go ahead and pull up your finished product and take a look at it. And you need to get your notebook out and write down what you want to see in the breakdown because you really need to visualize this before you get started. It's really important that you make a list of all the shots you want to see. The next step is going to be to go render out all these layers that you can use inside of your After Effects. This will vary for you depending on what footage. You're the one who's worked on it. You know what you did to it. So on this shot, I want to show the original footage. I want to show off my tracking marks uh, from my 3D track. I also took out the windmills in the background. I want to illustrate that. And then I want the mountain to be shown as well as the sky. I know that I have CG train tracks in a train and I'd like for those to drop in from the top. So I'm going to render them on isolated tracks. I'm also going to add in the shadows and the reflections on the train. The smoke is going to be isolated so it can be creatively presented as well as some of the trees. And then at the end, I want to show the bird as a wireframe and as a full render. Finally, I want to show two different layers of color Color correct being revealed. This will vary for your shot, but this is what I'm going to do with this one. The next step is super simple but really important, and it's to create a file structure for this project. Now, this is going to be a different file structure than you did on your actual. Um, VFX composition. This is its own thing and all the files for this breakdown are going to live inside of this breakdown project folder. As you can see, I've also created some subfolders inside of the breakdown project folder. You're definitely going to need at least two folders and that's one for your After Effects projects and the other for your breakdown layers. Now inside of breakdown layers, as you can see, I have an additional layer of subfolders that coincides with the planning we did earlier so that when we go to the next step, which is to actually render out all these layers, uh, we can stay really organized and stay on track and get this thing knocked out. Okay, so now it's time to actually render out the layers. And I'm using Nuke. All the same concepts apply if you made your original comp in After Effects. But since I'm using Nuke, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get these layers out of Nuke to use inside of After Effects for your breakdown. This process also really illustrates the value of having organized comps. Um, you may have not worked on this for a minute and now you're coming back and you need to render out specific things. So without having these labels and backdrop notes, it would be a really hard job. But if you work properly to begin with, it's not that hard. So we know that the very first layer that we need is the original plate. And so I actually have that inside my assets. What you want to do is create a write node. Go ahead and look at it and make sure, okay, this is what you want. And so now it's time to write it out to the file that you've chosen before. So you're going to locate your breakdown project file. And then inside of your breakdown layers, you're going to find the folder that you created for this layer. Okay, so you want to create this render sequence with the appropriate name. That's going to match the name of the folder and the name of the layer. This is 01 original. Uh, I usually just copy and paste. Uh, I'm using TIFF sequences, and I recommend you do the same as well. So once you've got the name right, you can save that. You're going to go ahead and render out that image sequence into the correct folder. At this point, you're basically going to rinse and repeat. You're going to do that same process over again for all of the layers in your list. So we've already got original footage. The next one's tracking marks only. So I've got my tracking marks over here. I could do a separate tutorial on how to bring your tracking marks in from Synthize. So if you guys would like to see that, let me know in the comments. But I do have them in here at this point. So this is what I want. I'm going to go ahead and write them out using the same process. Create a write node, locate the folder, O2 tracking, set the name, make it a TIFF sequence, 
hit save. And then one thing I wanted to mention is this one is, uh, since it's tracking marks only, I do want to include the alpha for this. I want this to be able to have a transparency and lay over the background. And so any of your layers that um, are isolated, like the train, the bird for me, needs to include the alpha in your render. So don't forget that. And then you can go ahead and render it out. So I'm not going to go through every single layer, but you get the point. You're going to go and you're going to find where inside of the comp you need to draw from to write out the layers that you need. If it needs a transparency, you're going to include the alpha. You should have this saved as a separate um, nuke file from your original script, so it's okay if you screw this one up. This process might take all day, um, depending on the speed of your computer and how fast you can render. Okay, so it's finally time for the good stuff. We're jumping right into After Effects, and we're going to start building this breakdown using all of the TIFF sequences that we rendered out for the layers in the last step. So as you can see, I've already imported them all into my project. Um, they are numbered, so it's easy to tell they're all there in what order they go in. So we're going to go ahead and create a composition with all of these inside. So you start on the um, bottom layer, hold Shift, and click on the top layer. Um, that's going to be the best way to select them, to stack them properly uh, inside of the comp. So once you do that, right click, go to new comp from selection. You want this to be single composition and have sequence layers turned off. After that, hit OK. So now you'll see since we started at 17 and uh, went to 1, it stacks them um, with one at the bottom, which is exactly what you want, because you're going to be building this up from the very bottom. So you can go through and you can look at basically everything that you have for your layers and make sure they're all properly there. You also want to rename this composition because it automatically gave it the name of the um, first layer you selected. So I'm just going to go with main build. Um, however you want to do it's fine. The basic method that I'm going to use for building this breakdown is just um, using masks. You know, I already have all the layers. They're already synced up. Uh, all the frames are in the right spot. So to reveal a layer, all I need to do is just um, unmask it. So let's just use this for an example. Let's say I want the tracking marks to, to come in from the side. Uh, I'll just select this layer. I have these two solo, though. That's why they're the only ones I could see. And I'll bring in a rectangle mask. and I'll start it here on this frame. You go down to your mask path and uh, click the little stopwatch to add a keyframe. And then maybe pick a few frames down, 10 frames, for example. And we'll set another keyframe there um, that will be over here to reveal. So what I usually do is I'll come up with a good speed that I like. And now that's being revealed over those 10 frames, maybe a little longer, just um, let's do 20 for the purposes of this tutorial. So you can kind of see it coming in better. So you got that coming in there. And now uh, an easy way to make a good consistent look is to copy those keyframes to the next, chain, um, the next layer up. So you don't have to do it every single time. You can literally just select these two frames, hit Control C, and then select the layer that you want to um, paste them onto, the frame that you want them to the keyframes to start coming in and hit control V. So now you can see if you hit U, it will reveal the keyframes. Those exact uh, mask and the animation of the mask have been pasted in to the next layer. So you can start already visualizing where this is going. You do that again um, on the next layer up. You want to add the mountains. We'll find the same keyframe. We're just doing it on every 20 for this. And you can start seeing how you're building this breakdown with everything coming in from the side. Now, obviously, you're going to want to tweak this, the timing and the look. You can put feathers on your mask layers if you want it to be a little bit smoother as it comes in instead of that harsh line. But the, um, this is really basic After Effects um, knowledge you have to have to do this. Nothing super advanced. You're literally just unmasking the layers as the timeline goes. <music> OK, 
Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to do these cool effects where the elements actually seem to drop into the scene. You can have them coming from the left or the right. For this example, I wanted the train to look like it was kind of falling and gently landing uh, from the sky. A lot of um, cool VFX breakdowns have that effect. So I'll show you how to do a simple version of it inside After Effects. So the first thing that I have is isolated these uh, two layers that I'm going to be working with. I have the background, which is uh, layer seven, and it's everything up to the train. And then layer eight is the train by itself. And that's the reason we isolated this when we rendered it is so we could do this type of effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, duplicate this layer because uh, I'm going to need one for each train car. Okay, so I've duplicated the layer, uh, so I have six of them now. I have them named train one through train six, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to each one individually. Um, I'm doing a different layer for each car of the train, so this will be for uh, the first car, the locomotive. I'm going to draw a rough mask around it. Obviously, you want to do a better job than this, but the goal is to mask out only the object that you want to be seen uh, you're going to need to animate this mask, so go down and make sure to hit that stopwatch. We're doing from 110 uh, until the end of the shot. So on 110, I'm putting a keyframe there. And then on the very last keyframe of the shot, I'm going to go ahead and move that mask uh, to match. So now we've got this rough moving mask that goes and isolates just that one part of the train. So the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate that exact process for each car of the train. Okay, so now I have six different layers. All of them have really rough masks drawn around each, and those are all animated towards the end. Now this train actually does have eight cars in this render, but I think six is enough to get the point across uh, for the effect. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, hit the U button, and you'll be able to see everything that's keyframed on them. Um, now what I want to do is I want to uh, move along about 20 frames. This is up to you. I'm going to put them at, uh, at 150, so that's 40 frames. And I'm going to set a position keyframe. I'm going to hit P and the little stopwatch. So all of them have a position keyframe now. So I, at this point, can go back to... 110, and I can increase the Y value on all of them until the train is completely out of sight. So when I play through, you're going to see it fall from the sky. There's still a couple things you want to do at this point to make the action look better. You're going to want to grab all these keyframes on the right side, right click on them, go to Keyframe Assistant and select Easy Ease In. That's going to let them set down a lot gentler, uh, and it's going to look a lot smoother than if you just have them coming straight from the ground in a linear motion. The last thing to do is to change the timing on them. So you need to select all the um, layers, hit U again so you can see every keyframe, and then we're going to start offsetting them by a few frames each layer. Just going to grab each one. You only want to pull the keyframes, not the entire layer. And once you look at how it looks, you will obviously want to adjust it to your liking. So I think this needs to be a little faster. I'm going to go ahead and um, make those keyframes a little bit closer together. So you can use this idea for a lot of different applications. It doesn't have to be coming down from the top. It could be coming in from any direction. I've actually used this concept in a lot of VFX breakdowns that I've made. If you take these techniques and really um, spend a lot of time tweaking every layer to be perfect and really putting your heart into the project, uh, I think you'll find that using just basic After Effects skills, you can make some really awesome uh, breakdowns for your demo reel. I think it's really important to present your work in a way that really lets it shine the most. Maybe you put a ton of work in the comp, but if you don't do the VFX breakdown properly, then maybe you're missing out on some potential because people really like to see breakdowns. It's a really awesome way to show off all the hard work you've done for your shot. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the feedback. And of course, uh, if you want more content like this, hit that like button and uh, go ahead and subscribe too while you're at it. But thanks again for checking out my video and never stop challenging yourself.